To start our Jen Stark uh, drip drawing, drip painting project, we're gonna begin with some practice in our sketchbook. And we have some inspiration to kind of be looking at the different organic, curvy, drippy lines here. And then kind of a close up of what those lines look like. So I'm gonna open up to one page in my sketchbook. I can either work this way or I can flip it this way. I think I'm gonna flip this way and work. And so I'm just gonna start with a curvy drippy line and I'm working fairly slowly. So some of my drips are shorter, some are longer. And then I'm gonna fill in this drip with more lines. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna leave a space, oopsie, in between. Okay, we don't want our lines to be super duper close together like this um, for our project because we're gonna be outlining with a thick black tool and we don't want them to overlap. If you wanna do it in your sketchbook, that's all right, but um, you know, maybe I even leave a little more space in some parts. Something like that. And then the other thing I could do is I could do an overlapping drip. So the drips in this painting you can see that there's parts that overlap. So what if I did, to kind of fill in this section, I could do another section like that. And if I, do, if I need to overlap at all, I'm gonna just hop over the drip that I already drew. You might also want to write the artist's name in your sketchbook. So I'm going to write her name there. And then after we're done with our sketch, we'll move on to our big paper. All right, with my big paper, I'm going to begin by writing my name and my teacher code. And the um, thing I want to decide on is if I want my drip to be really long and vertical or a little bit more wide, kind of like I did in my sketchbook. Now for this final project, I think I'm gonna turn my paper vertically and just see what happens. And I'm gonna draw fairly lightly with my pencil in case I need to erase. So I'm gonna start with my biggest one And then I'm gonna go back in, leave at least a finger amount of space, if not more. Maybe some are a little bit closer together. And maybe some are a little further apart. Maybe down here I add another drip because I do want to have a rainbow drip and then I want another part coming through that has some black and white. So I think I'm gonna add another drippy down here. Now I'm gonna use my ink bottle to trace over my ink. And remember when we use these, we don't need to squeeze the bottle or push really hard. I think I'm gonna start on my small shapes and then work my way out. That way I'm not gonna smear my ink. So you can see that this is a pretty wide, thick line. So we don't want anything super close together or they'll run into each other. I like to pull this tool towards me 
to create that nice crisp line. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna be thinking about is a color scheme. So I'm gonna be choosing some colors. This is obviously a rainbow um, one, but what if you did a pattern with just warm colors, like red, orange, and yellow? Or a pattern of your three favorite colors, like my three favorite would probably be the cools. Maybe I did a pattern of purple, blue, and teal. Purple, blue, and teal. I think I definitely want to do the black and white pattern in part of my drip, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna choose three or four of my favorite colors to repeat um, here. So I'm gonna write with a letter on each drip, kind of at the top, what color it's gonna be. So I'm gonna do purple with a P, blue with a B, and then teal with a T or turquoise, purple, blue and then this is gonna be black white black and white all right now that we're ready to paint whether you're using the tempera cakes or the watercolors we're gonna be using a little mixing tray not really to mix new colors but so that we can put our color in here and make sure that it's uniform, all the same color for our whole drip. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my black because that's pretty easy. So I'm gonna wake up my color and I'm gonna put it right here. And you'll notice that if I add more black, it's gonna be darker, which I want. If I add more water, it's gonna be lighter. So if I put it all right here, it's gonna be all, all the same, shade of black for my whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this part black. And as we're painting, we want to make sure our brush is nice and full of paint. We wanna paint right up to the edges of our shape and we don't wanna leave any scratchy lines. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and do some purple next. So maybe my purple is gonna be a little bit lighter. So if I want a light purple, then I'm gonna just add some water to it. And then this puddle I'm gonna use for all of my purple. So I'm gonna start up here. Keep going back to my little palette. If I were to go back to this, then it would be darker, right? And I don't want that to be darker. I want it to be consistently the same all the way through my shape. Okay. Got another purple part over here, so I'm gonna go to my other P. also notice that I am leaving a space in between because I want to make sure that they dry and don't run into each other. All right, I really like how these look. Um, they are very dark and bold. So we're gonna, I'm gonna use these for the rest of mine. I really want my teal to be really bold here. 
So I like to paint right along the edge of my shape first. And then paint the inside. We're really paying attention to our painting craftsmanship. Jen Stark has really great craftsmanship in her work. And she takes a long time to create her work and that's why it looks so amazing. 